guys, what's up? Cheers to you. I'm just having my, I'm probably gonna burn my tongue. And incidentally, speaking of my tongue, well, that's an inappropriate way to start a video, isn't it? Um, well, I'm not gonna give you a close up. I have a canker sore. I always seem to get a canker sore, don't I? I always get a canker sore right on the tip of my tongue. I was trying to sleep last night. I was having issues sleeping last night again. And the whole time I'm trying to fall asleep. That's probably why I was having issues. I'm sitting there laying down going, biting my, biting it like an idiot. Like, why do we do that? When it's kind of like when I got that blister on my foot from the fire walk. And then I sit there and I'm like, picking it. I have to like mess with things. <sighs> anyway, hold on. I'm probably going to, I'm literally just having, did I put my cinnamon in that? Yes, I did. I think I did. Did I? I don't think I did. Hold on. Can you hold on two seconds? Um, I don't think I put my cinnamon in my cup. Oh, hello. It's Chad and Nickelback. I really don't think I put my cinnamon in my coffee. I think I just put the um, uh, coconut oil in, which really makes a difference when there's cinnamon and coconut oil. And this is one of my favorite Angry Nickelback songs, but I think it's a little loud, so hold on. Sorry. I just know. <sighs> um, anyway, so I'm having my Oats with PB2. None of this stuff I eat for breakfast is visually like bon appetit. My egg white pancake that I have every morning, the little bit of Parmesan cheese, garlic, salt, and pepper, which I gotta tell you, I, <laughs> some people go, how can you enjoy egg whites? Making them this way for, for me is different. I, if I've gone to a restaurant and uh, they make, you know, you ordered scrambled egg whites or something, they are white. I think I, like when you get it browned, it tastes different, plus adding the spices that I add. It gives it just enough flavor. Parmesan cheese, people. Parmesan cheese, you don't need a lot to get a lot of flavor. Don't I sound like I should be on a talk show? You really don't need a lot. Anyway. I came out here, and by the way, you guys are gonna ask, this is one of the, um, under Armour t-shirts. I have my workout shirt on underneath it, um, but when I went to sit out back, it's starting to get fall weather. I was a little um, chilly in just my whatever, but here's the deal. So I just finished my workout, and I adjusted my workout. I finished up with um, a shoulder blast, and in the midst of this workout, I came to this, you know, and I wrote my blog about this yesterday, but I came to this realization for myself, but then this is kind of what I'm about to share with you. I don't, yeah, I guess it's a lesson, right? A lot of what I've been sharing with you guys are things that I figured out about myself, about my behaviors, about my habits, what was driving those habits. Cause you know, you guys tend to write me. I just wipe my face with a kitchen towel and I don't even care. You guys, a lot of you guys are writing me going, what, what's different about me now that I've been able to like make progress because if you've been watching my videos um, I'm trying to think of when I started doing videos but um, you know I was working out having a, a reasonable degree of success you know I certainly didn't feel like oh my god you know I have to lose all this weight but then if you're new I'm just giving you background um, when perimenopause hit me early at age 40 um, I just dramatically it's like my body changed overnight I gained weight um, and it was very fast because I was like working out with my trainer Jay <laughs> and one of the first things he noticed was like I was like busting out of all of my tops because first I'd lost weight it was after my divorce so I'd lost a lot of weight not in a healthy way I mean like I had no ass I, it was skinny fat um, and then I started working out and was training and then all of a sudden it was like boom boobs were out here all of a sudden I had tummy pudge and it was just there was fat just gained everywhere it was just like I had expanded and I was much more hourglass and all this and it happened very rapidly. My body temperature changed, which is why I'm hot all the time, um, which is why I have issues sleeping. Good times, people. Um, and then I got the skin infection, yada, yada, yada. But all that to say, it, it, it was literally about two, two and a half years that my metabolism had changed, my body had changed, and I just, I almost said froked out about it. 
<coughs> trying to say freaked out in past tense, which is really past tense. But, you know, when something like that is so dramatic and it happens to you and you feel like you're out of control, you know, I didn't realize it at the time, but I just ended up doing a lot of feeling sorry for myself and, you know, I thought I was still continuing to work out, thought I was eating right, but I really wasn't. So, not only had this happened, um, and I, you know, had this dramatic change in, in my body and my metabolism and everything. But then on top of that, you know, then I stop working out as much. Then I start feeling sorry for myself. Then I start having, you know, less activity and more, you know, binging and picking out because I'm you know, feeling sorry for myself and feeling overwhelmed. The point of all of this is that what's changed for me the most towards the end of last year and this year, I've always had the desire. I've always enjoyed working out. For the most part, I, I enjoy all the healthy food that I eat. Certainly love my cheat meals too. But, you know, what was it that, that was different? For two, two and a half years, maybe it was even three, you know, I just went up and down, up and down with levels of intensity, with consistency, with what I was eating. And I think the main overriding factor was that I just really didn't believe I was capable of doing it. Um, I felt like, oh, this is beyond my control, you know, there's nothing I can do, this sucks, you know, I really don't want to be this person that's always, you know, like I'm a size bigger than I've been the past couple of years, I'm almost two sizes bigger, I hate it, I hate, you know, that I'm, and then I, by that time I had founded the company, so I was like, I hate that I'm around all these fitness people and that's what I love, but I can't achieve it. That was my mindset, was I can't achieve it, I don't believe that I can really do this, this is beyond my control, I've done everything. When really what's changed this year and what the biggest thing I want to get across to you, I don't care what your goals are or where you are in your journey, if you're just starting. I hate it when sleeves do this. This is what happens when you have arms like this. Um, I just hate how they ride up there, which is why I usually don't wear tops, but this is nice in that it's really stretchy. Um, and it's also really nice and I don't know if you can tell, it's very thin. Um, the biggest thing that everybody needs to understand is, and the biggest thing that's changed for me, and I experienced this the past day in particular, this might be a little bit of a long book, you've gotta get it in your head that you can do it. That might sound really simple. You'd be like, of course, Kelly, I need to get in my head that I can do it, blah, blah, blah. You know, the thing is, is that it's very easy. So, for example, say you're somebody who's just starting and, and you have a lot of weight to lose. You might be heading into this and you'll look at certain people whether they, you know, it's Kathy Friedrich who has all these great DVDs out, or people on the cover of a fitness magazine, or fitness bloggers, whoever, people on YouTube, and you, you see them and you see that they're in great shape and they're doing this and they're full of energy, and you're looking at them going, okay, I don't have that kind of energy, I don't have that kind of time, there's no way I'm gonna do that. So in your mind, you're literally looking, you know, whether you're consciously thinking it or not, you're looking at everybody else like, that's a different kind of personality. I don't have that and I'm never gonna get there, so why start? Then there can be another kind of person that um, is maybe like I was. Um, I had been working out to some degree since I first discovered Tybo, really. Well, there's been several levels of starting to work out, but you know, in my post-college life, it was when I found Tybo after my first or second job. And I had gained weight from, you know, being in the corporate environment and being around donuts all the time and cookies and chips and happy hour. Um, you can be that person who, you know, maybe you've been, you know, running 20 minutes several times a week and all of a sudden some age hits you and you're like, whoa, you know, I've got love handles or, you know, suddenly I've got, a, you know, a huge, a, a huge butt or my thighs are bigger. That can happen to any of us. It doesn't have to be you know, like in, in women, it doesn't have to be perimenopause. It can be a hormonal imbalance. It can just be age. Sometimes it happens very suddenly, or maybe it's been creeping on and you didn't even recognize it. And one day, you know, it's summer or you go on vacation, you go to put those clothes on you had last summer and you're like, what? So you can also be somebody, you know, I gave you the example of somebody who's starting, the, starting a fitness journey and they're overwhelmed and they think they can't because they don't know any better. And then there's somebody who's had maybe a certain degree of success or like me, you know, I had this thing happen, my body was different. Everything that was in my brain told me, I can't change this, Every, I've tried everything. That's what you think. So you can be that way or, or there could be any other number of situations. I'm already at 10 minutes. The point is, when you finally do 
what, what I started to do in the past, let's say year or whatever, and you really take a hard look at yourself, the best thing you can do is to really, and this doesn't just apply to your fitness life, this applies to anything. The best thing you can do is really take a hard look at yourself and, and everything you're telling yourself that you can't do, you look at yourself like you're a, a, a third party and go, you know, as if you were coaching, you know, a sister or a brother, somebody at work that you care about, you know? If, if someone came to me and I met some somebody in Vegas and, and he was telling me, and he was in great shape and he was talking about how much weight he lost and he's like, you know, I'm doing this and I want someone to help me with my macros. BJ, if you're watching this, I'm talking about you. And I said, oh, are you gonna compete? And he's like, no. And I said, why are you not gonna compete? And he's like, well, I couldn't compete. And I'm like, why can't you compete? So you have to talk to yourself as if you're talking to someone that you're encouraging, right? I've talked about this, like, like you're your own coach. So you, people sometimes avoid looking at themselves and going, okay, what am I really eating? Because they really don't wanna know, but you should embrace that and here's why. Don't be embarrassed. By, I've shared with you guys some embarrassing stuff about me. You know, like the fact that, hey, I know, I don't understand why I do it, but I do know that when I get angry and I get pissed off, my immediate reaction is to go eat something bad. Don't know where that developed or why, but I just do it. Do you think I'm proud to tell you that? No, but once I figure that out about myself, because I can look at myself and go, what are the stupid things you're doing that are not getting you where you need to be? What has become ridiculously clear to me in the past year or so is that it really is, a, 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 I don't want to say scientific and overwhelm you, getting in shape to whatever degree you want to get. If you want to run a half marathon, if you want to run, want to run a 5K, if you want to compete on stage as a bodybuilder or figure competitor, if you want to just lose 25, 50, 75 pounds, whatever your goals are, it there, there is a small percentage of people that would you know need medical help or whatever. It really is just a numbers game. It really is a mathematical equation. It really is just figuring out macros, activity, whatever. There are things that add up to get you where you wanna go. So if, for example, you know, and, and that's what most of us, myself included in the past, don't wanna do. We don't wanna get on the scale when in our heads we think, oh, I have you know five or 10 pounds to lose. We know in our heads we have more weight to lose. We don't wanna get on the scale because the scale is gonna go, hello! You have more weight to lose than that. That is where you start. Get on the scale, figure out how much weight you have to lose because then when you do that, and yeah, you guys, I have had the blessing of, of being around incredible trainers and, and nutritionists and dietitians that I could go to and ask these questions. But you know, maybe for you it means saying I'm going to invest in a trainer for you know one month uh, just so I can get started. Hold on. But the thing is, get on the scale, figure out what you need to do. You can't, you know, a lot of these, I'm not telling you guys anything new. I'm not saying like, oh, I thought of this. This is stuff you can find anywhere. But really, how do you know how to attack how much weight you have to lose if you don't know how much weight you have to lose? Because what you need to do, say you have in your head. <clears throat> I didn't know what song this is. So you have in your head, oh, I think I have to lose five or 10 pounds to lose. Once you get on the scale and you realize you have 25 pounds to lose, then you have to go, okay, so 25 pounds, realistically, an aggressive weight loss plan would be where I'd lose two pounds a week. So if I'm gonna lose two, let's, let's be more realistic. I'm just starting off, let's say a pound a week. That's 25 weeks, that's half a year, right? Then you can start to get on yourself and instead of doing what you did with yourself before you knew that, so if you think in your head, I have five or 10 pounds to lose, you're gonna start doing something for 10 days or a month and you're gonna look at yourself and go, I'm not making any, I'm not making any changes. Whereas if you knew the information that you needed for your own scientific analysis that you were tracking, then you could go, okay, it's not realistic for me to expect that I would have lost all the weight that I need to lose within 30 days. I have six months, I'm on a six month plan. So if you know you wanna lose 25 pounds and you figured out that you wanna take six months to do it, then you start mapping it out and you go, okay, what do I wanna do this month? And then you get to the end of this month and you track it. And then you start to figure out what your body responds to. And sometimes some of you might think that's sucky that you have to experiment. Get over it, you have to experiment. Sometimes people respond well to low carb diet plans. Some people respond to um, 
paleo. Some people respond to protein shakes and protein bars. Some of the things I've figured out about myself are that I don't do well when I'm having like protein bars. The second I start realizing that it's been a couple weeks of, of protein bars and all of that crap, um, I don't want to say crap, that's not right, because it's, it's a great thing for, for most people. For me, my body does not respond well to it. Um, once you know what you have to work with, it, it can be more comforting to you, regardless of what you're aiming for, when you have all the information. And then you just treat yourself like that science experiment. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop here, because I know I could keep rambling for another 15 minutes. I'm gonna do part two. But let's wrap up part one in saying, you need to face it, you need to face yourself, and, and be as um, subjective or objective, a, a, as shining the light on yourself and, and knowing everything, looking at your activities, your habits, what you've really done as far as activity, what you haven't done as far as diet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to be able to do that and don't be scared of it or intimidated or embarrassed by it because that's a gift to you. And I'm gonna go into the next video and explain like why I ended up shooting this, <laughs> what was the thing that just happened to me in the past 24 hours, and then I'll get back to all of this. So, God, I, I talk so much, don't I? What are you gonna do?